people are calling him the Come in. Um, uh, hi. Scott, I'm Miss Hollingsworth. So, so great to meet you. Hey. Let's get started. You have a nice office. It's roomy. Listen, Scott, I'm going to be as completely honest as I can with you here. You don't want to be here. I get that. The last thing you want to do after a traumatic experience is sit down and talk it out. <laughs> to be honest, you might be the first person to actually agree with me on that. But it's more than that. Losing a parent is hard at any age, especially with you being so young. You can't just keep pushing this down. Is that why they're making me do this? This mandatory grieving? No one is making you do anything. We're just getting started here. This is good. I'm your friend. <laughs> so what, you want me to start at the top? You want to know my first words? Well, let's just start with the accident. What do you remember? I remember it happened really fast. All I could think to do was just get out of the car, you know? And it didn't feel like I was there. It felt like it was happening past tense. You know what I mean? Like I was watching it happen, like a memory, you know? And then I saw my dad. Was your dad in the car with you? No, no, he flew out on impact. The police found him five yards away, face down. And so what do you remember thinking? I don't remember thinking anything. It still felt like I wasn't even there. Your situation is kind of ironic, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, he was the head of an insurance firm. He was a literal ambulance chaser. It sounds like you hold some resentment over your dad's job. No, no, but I mean, you saw the advertisements, Fairchild Law, cause your rights matter. It was all a bunch of bullshit. So your dad's job affected you? Yeah. I mean, I practically grew up around car accidents. It's hard to relate to the other kids when their dads have a nine to five and yours is barely home. It sounds like you still have some resentment over your dad. No, I don't. <laughs> I mean, he's gone now, right? He's gone. This is good. This is good, Scott. But if we're gonna get any real work done, you have to be honest with me. What do you mean? Just tell the truth, Scott. I don't know what you're talking about. Have you ever heard of sensory adaptation, Mr. Fairchild? Just call me Scott. It's when an exterior stimuli occurs so often that eventually you don't realize it's happening. It's like this clock, for example. The ticking, when you first sit down, is so loud it becomes infuriating. But eventually it just becomes background noise. I'd say that's pretty unfortunate. Everyone knows that your father was more than just a successful lawyer. Okay, I don't think this is very appropriate. The way he handled his business, his family. Abuse, or even witnessing abuse, can be very traumatic for a child. Some push it deep down inside, almost until it becomes background noise. Whereas others take action. It's funny, right? That a brand new Ford Focus would have faulty brakes. That's what it was, right? Faulty brakes. But when the police looked into it, everything checked out. It's almost as if someone knew what they were doing. <laughs> it's funny. My dad had this exact same poster at work. He had a lot of posters like this, actually. He used to say they were a little reminder to keep him on the right track. It was all bullshit. I'm not some victim, Hollingsworth. I'm not some kid that snapped, okay? Just seeing what he did to my sister to my mom. I'm a killer. Scott, I can help you. No, I'm a killer because he had to die. Scott, I can help you. We can you had to dig it up, didn't you? Scott, what are you doing? It was over. Scott, put that down. Son, you had to go digging it back up. Scott. Honey. 
<laughs> I thought I got away with it. I felt like for once, it was all over. Please, please put it down. This is how it was always meant to happen. Whether I liked it or not. <laughs>